Hey, I want to thank you for being here. You can find more conversations just like this one on arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. It's time to play it forward. These are real people. Real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 550 is with Sharon Price John, author of Stories and Heart. Good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Your, your book speaks volumes inside my soul. And I mean, just the title itself, Stories and Heart. A lot of people don't understand that. But where it really starts opening up and cleansing the heart, the power to create a life you love is within you. It's not out here. It's within you. And I love that idea. You are a planter of seeds. Yeah, and a builder of bears. <laughs> <laughs> to get into that moment, to be able to to basically, you know, relinquish what you believe is is that happier person. What, what did you personally have to go through? Because we don't just wake up one day and say, "Hey, I'm going to write a book called Stories and Heart." Oh, gee, no, you know, it's a uh, years of a journey, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that that's sometimes part of the challenge um, is that. You know, people want to get there so quickly in this in this world with you know media and and how much how fast things are coming at us that you know it it takes time and quiet and internal um, reflection to really understand who you want to be as a person, what goals are really going to make you happy that are being influenced by the inside versus the outside. Um, and then, you know, being willing to be bold enough to take, make choices and take steps on what's possible versus what's probable. What I love about getting older is the fact that we have been leaving breadcrumbs behind. I've been a daily writer for 29 years, and it's fascinating to go back into those pages and go, oh, my God, I can use this right now. And, and that's what, what it's almost like that's what you've done here, Sharon, is that you have picked up breadcrumbs and you're saying, this doesn't belong to me anymore. Here, I want you to grow with it. Oh, that I really appreciate that perspective, and it was um, really that kind of uh, you know aha moment for me uh, that ultimately the the waiting of write the book and share the stories over the fear of maybe nobody will you know want to read this or even sharing some of my personal you know insights mm-hmm. that I. And kind of a private person, but it, it it became overweight on the side of you know you gotta you gotta share the breadcrumbs. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Sharon, you do something that radio people do. If you if you do not bare your soul and come you know and come out with a little bit of transparency, you can't pe- uh, pull people into your paragraphs. And you do that. You you allow them through your stories to say, I thought I was the only one. No, you're not the only one. We're all going to grow together. Right. And I also think that um, I, I was I really wanted to start all the way back to childhood mm-hmm. where, you know, sometimes, you know, even in a position that you're in, people are like, oh, yeah, but they are this or they did that. And so all of a sudden in the minds of many, you become unrelatable. Um, well, we're all relatable as kids. We all tried to climb a tree that we thought was impossible to climb. All of us have had death in our families, like my grandmother passing. You know, all of us, you know, you know, had to make some choices about whether we what we you know, want to go to school or not um, or where, you know, so it's it's not all about the successes. It's about the failures and the journey and allowing that journey to twist and turn and seeing the beauty in that. You bring up a very interesting point about losing people in your family, because I always grew up fearing losing my parents. But 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 since I have gone through that now, I hear their voices more today than I did when they were with me. And I just know, but you can't, until you experience it, you just don't know it. Right. And my father's voice is uh, echoed, as well as my mom, but mostly my dad uh, and my grandmother throughout this book. It, yeah. it, while writing it, um, I could hear my dad saying some of the things that I <laughs> talk about. Yeah. <laughs> the the thing that you do is you activate your readers because you can't, I mean, words in a book are one thing, but when you activate them with exercises that they can put into their own chapters, they've got to learn about it and put themselves in that situation. So that was very smart of you to do that inside th- this book. Well, you know, some of it is I, I didn't uh, want this to just be some, you know, long narrative. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted it to be act, an active, you know, an active book. Um, and um, so, you know, I broke it down into these smaller digestible sections 
um, where it sort of tell a story that sets it up, hopefully something that's a little interesting. Maybe you learn something. Certainly, I hope you relate to it. And then I try to ask a question from the heart that relates back to sort of the subtitle in each book. I mean, sometimes it might be, um, you know, goals and gumption, which is the first book. And I relate that question back to, do you have enough gumption to really follow through on these goals that you set in your life? And then challenge people to think about that, what they've done. You know, are you, have you gone through enough life lessons to have um, mastered this cycle of success? Because it's, it, it becomes a habit, um, mm-hmm, or not, mm-hmm. of you know, setting a goal, trying, failing, and then trying again, and then it working, and recognizing that failing is a part of the success path. And um, if you've never failed, you <laughs> you don't know where your limits are. <laughs> Failure to me is fuel. That's that's an open eye moment. Well, right, but it took you probably, I'm guessing, yeah. a while yeah. to 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 put to create that narrative mm-hmm. around failure that is now empowering for you instead of stopping you from doing anything every time you do something that doesn't work because that's what I think people aren't sometimes willing to share, particularly successful people, and we must share it that just because without that, people have, a, I think, a misconception that if they try something and fail it, that means they're never going to be successful because clearly no one that's been successful has ever failed. And that's not true mm-hmm. from you to Thomas Edison. Rand- Randy Bachman of Bachman Turner Overdrive and the guess who once told me, he says, you only know me for my hits. You don't know me for my misses. He says, you have got to hear my story. That's exactly right. And there's, you know, I I can't think of a successful person that when being or being willing to be candid and truthful or to, as your point, open up your story a little bit, that that's not the case. And yeah, you know, we we narrate our lives sometimes in these um, really uh, sequential bullet points um, like a resume, but people need to know the ups and downs because it's there. And that's what gives people energy and power and and will to move forward sometimes is just the recognition that every single one that's accomplished anything worthwhile has had a circuitous journey. One of the things that I do is I keep a defrag journal. I defrag everything because I believe that relationship with the inner core, it starts off with sharing that story or someone's going to write it for me. How important is it to get in there, ask the questions to your personal self so that you can bring it forward to help others? Well, the the first part of that's absolutely critical. Or you, I think you'll you'll probably you know never really get in touch with who you are, and that takes some quiet time, yeah. and um, you know, and, and or maybe and people come up you know find the different paths to do that. Some people run, some people meditate, some people do yoga, whatever it is. But your your you know your if you want to call it soul or your inner self. It has something to say to you, but the world's pretty loud. Yeah, it is. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 we have to take that on ourselves to to be aligned with who we really are. And it your your true self wants to tell you something, um, but you have to listen. You have to be willing to listen. Yep. And that response of how that makes you feel. Try something on. You know, visualize yourself in this role or that or doing this or doing that. And if that makes you feel like that's empowering, that's exciting, then then that's probably a path for you to explore. I'll tell you that anything you're going to do is going to require energy. Yep. You still have to get up in the morning. You still have to put your feet on the floor. You still got to like, you know, exude some, some action. But when you're on your right path, it's just energizing. At the end of the day, you somehow have more energy. You did the same stuff, physically the same amount of energy that came out of you. But somehow, when you're doing something you love or you know you're on your right path or you have a lot of, um, you know, just, uh, you know, feel like that it's, it's something you're, you're on a journey that's bigger than you, which is also a part of it, 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 it changes everything about the way you tackle almost anything. 
even the negative things that happen. The importance of this book, first of all, listeners need to understand, it's called Stories and Heart. And what they need to do is don't buy the book to read the book. Buy the book to sip on it, to savor it, to take it one day and one page at a time. That's how important this book is, Sharon. I mean, it is a great book to put into your daily life. Wow. Thank you for that. I mean, I, I just, I, that's really flattering. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, I think that you, I, I feel like that you're understanding that, you know, I never wanted to write a book quote unquote about me. That's not the goal of this. I, you know, it's really just using these stories and snippets of my life to kind of put together, um, a, a blueprint, a roadmap, a, pos- a, a, a road of possibilities for other people to think about their own paths and their own, you know, I guess from goal tree to 100 wishes in life to finding a ways to get traction to stifling your negative committee. Like these are some of the exercises that are in here that I I know after speaking with so many people over time have um, have um, interrupted careers and and um, for no reason than any other than that that what you're spinning in your own head. Oh my goodness! Please come back to this show any time in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Sharon. Well, this has been uh, just delightful, and I really appreciate it. And I'd love to hear you know more from from you and and um, if you you know what you liked or didn't like about the book. I'd really appreciate that. Absolutely. I'll reach out to you, okay? That'd be great. You'd be brilliant today. You'd be brilliant today.